Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings Card Game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. <laughs> and today we're going to be doing something a little bit unique. Um, we've been discussing Sylvans in the whole month of February, and um, all the discussion and all the playing and all the fun stuff that I was doing behind the scenes to get ready for it, um, I kind of decided that that excitement made me want to do a one deck run or what i'm calling a one deck run i'm not sure exactly what the community calls it but i want to play every scenario i want to try to beat every scenario with um the deck so what i've done off camera is i beat the whole hobbit saga with this deck and then i beat the whole haradrim cycle with the deck and then i beat escape from dole door with this deck so i was able to really beat some of the challenging quests i mean it took me a couple of times but and so i thought that i would do this um one deck run <laughs> just to just to have a little fun in the game and then bring it to you guys and and along the way grant and i are going to get together and um for some Maybe half, maybe most. I don't know. However it works out. Grant and I are going to just talk about play and how the game works. And, you know, just so people can see how how it goes on. Now, um, I won't post any of the losing runs, but at the beginning of every scenario, I'll post, I'll tell people um, how many times I've played it or Grant and I have, have tried to record it and we've lost or what we might just have, if it's taken forever to get sorted, we might just have a, a counter in the where you can see David's dice box there. <laughs> we might just right. have a counter there. Right, something that's doing this. And right. I'm thinking of into a Thillion for that one. Or Battle of Lake Town. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of Cairn Doom, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and so just to give you a layout of what's going on, I mean, some of my other playthroughs have been posted so this is going to be doing this i don't know of any other group that does things live like this i feel like people use octgn because it's easy um i totally Everything's... agree but i don't know of anybody who plays live and then and then records um it. you've got the lotr deck tech who plays who's doing more live stuff than he is doing digital at the minute um and there's a few others that are not going about on youtube right. that have live card playthroughs now the thing about octgn it's quick and it's simple all the setups done for you and it's just there ready to play and for shuffling the decks the con it's if it's computer generated it's already done you can just right click shuffle or control w and it shuffles your deck there's no fucking around with cards trying to shuffle them up. <laughs> oh, you're so whatever. I I like I prefer playing with real cards, but it is what it is. Right, right, right. I'm not knocking OCTGN. I think that um, it's a great platform for doing this, but I just really love playing with the cards, and I have all yeah, of the I have all the cards. I'm the same. I love playing with the real cards, but it's just so much easier. Right. To do digital. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess we're starting here with the first scenario from the core set. Um, so Grant, why don't you talk a little bit about what the first scenario is from the core set, and then, you know, maybe what what my deck is while I shuffle up and get ready here. Right. Well, David's deck is the Slippery Sylvans, which you can find on RingsDB if you put in the search engine for authors of Card Talk. And the quest is um, passage through Mirkwood. Quest phase 1A reads, You are travelling through Mirkwood Forest, carrying an urgent message from King Thranduil to the Lady Galadriel of Lorien. As you move along the dark trails, spiders gather around you. And as for setup instructions, which go off after you've drawn your first six cards, um, it reads, Search the encounter deck for... A copy of the Forest Spider and the Old Forest Road, which David's already got out into play. Um, and you shuffle the deck, the encounter deck. And generally speaking, when a card says look at top X or um, look at all cards, you, 
unless it states otherwise, you shuffle the deck afterwards. Right, unless it says keep it in that particular order. Yeah, or um, put players in an order you um, want. Right, okay. Um, so I drew six cards. I'm going to look at my hand. So I have... So in the interest of full disclosure, um, we started recording one, and we had tree people... And the problem is, is that tree people can't be triggered unless oh, Galadriel has oh, oh. Nenya. So we had a bad, a bad starting. So yeah, this is actually the second I'm... time we've done this. Yeah. So, but the, but, um, I always say that. And that um, looks like a good start in hand. You've got, right, you got tree Nenya people. There. We have Nath guide, steward of Gondor, Nath, another Nath guide. Then we have Nenya, and then we have Haldir. So, uh, I've always said that in order to start the game, you typically want to have one of the three resource um, accelerators, which is Steward of Gondor, and then there's Olorian, and then there's Nen Nenya isn't really a resource um, accelerator, but it allows you to play tree people and allows you to do um, some other things um, in the deck. Um, and so my heroes are Celeborn, Galadriel, and Thranduil, and we're using cards up to Fire in the Night. Um, this isn't a progression series, so it's just using what I think is the best Sylvan deck that I could put together. So, um, so should we get started? Yep, let's. So, flipping okay. over to 1B, it's just flavor text which says the nastiest things they saw were cobwebs. Dense, dark cobwebs with threads extraordinarily thick, often stretched from tree to tree or tangled in the lower branches on either side of them. There were none stretched across the path, but whether because some magic kept it clear, or for what other reason, they could not guess. From the Hobbit. <laughs> right, um, so I was going to say that I feel like this, um, that the core set scenarios, with the exception of, or the, even that whole first, um, that whole first um, cycle, the Mirkwood cycle, uh, it kind of mimics the the saga or you know the saga expansions like you're going through mirkwood you're battling spiders um at some point you have trolls to worry about you're battling nazgul you know like and so you know there was no it's not that there was no foresight but when the game came out they didn't know that they were going to make the saga so they feel like they were trying to come up with a reason to you know trying to reflect some of those um points from the book in the in the lore in the game and i and i appreciate that so. Yeah, definitely. And just for further disclosure, David had already knew that he was keeping that hand. So mulligans would be done before setup. Right. So you draw your six cards, decide whether you want to do it. As soon as you flip this card, technically, I guess you've started the well, game. Well, as soon as you do setup. So really right. before you even start the quest. Right. You need right. to decide whether you're keeping your hand or not, and then you go on to do the set of instructions. Right. Okay. So now it's the start of my turn, so I get to draw a card. Island Amid Perils. Okay. So, so let's do this. I'm going to put Nenya down. Uh, and so I'll pay for that using this resource. And then I'm going to put Steward of Gondor onto Galadriel. I found that for this deck, when you put Steward of Gondor, when you get Steward of Gondor at the beginning, it's better to have Steward on Galadriel to begin with because she has two two resource types, and to per, to keep producing those resources um, with her is uh, it just seems really um, it's the better option early game. So I'm going to exhaust Steward of Gondor, and that gives me two resources to put onto her. Now, I can't play any of, I can't play my Nath Guide now, but I may be able to play it during the combat phase. Like that, that could be something that I do. Okay, anyways. So now I'm done planning. I'll keep my cards face up here so that if you need to see them, you can see them. Okay, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
exhaust. I'm going to quest with Celeborn for three. Do you want to send Frangwill as well? Oh, because the Old Forest Road allows me to ready a character. Exactly. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah, I'll send Thranduil. And then I'm going to save, because Nenya's on Galadriel, I could, after I reveal the card, I could also send Galadriel to help with that. Um, you could? I could. I could commit her as well um, as her action, but because um, she's got a quest. Nenya gives her a quest action. But yeah. um, I usually typically wait until after I reveal to see if I need to. Okay. Yeah, that's certainly a good idea. So that's two, three, five. I'm actually not upset to take one threat increase. This is worse things. <laughs> you know. Um, actually, you know what? I'll commit. I'll commit Galadriel. Or not commit, but I'll use her quest action that Nenya gives her. So I have to exhaust Nenya and her. And so that gives plus four. So that's, um, uh, three, four, eight against five. So that means I do thir three progress on the current quest. Okay, so now I'm going to travel to the Old Forest Road, even though it has less threat. I don't know, what do you think? Old Forest well, Road versus Chain of Street, it's well, not that huge of you, a deal. You don't have many cards in your hand that are unbeneficial at this point, so I'd say the Old Forest Road, so that allows you to deal with that attack from the um, forest spider. Okay. Because it's three attack, otherwise, if all your heroes are exhausted, that would be an undefended attack, and there are some nasty stuff. I think you're right. So it's about playing the thing. So that readies this guy. This guy comes down. Okay. So after we settle um, the progress and oh. everything, and we travel, yeah, now we do the encounter phase, and we compare the threat that we have to the um, to the engagement cost of the of the of the enemy. And, and this... just for people to know, what is your starting threat out there, David? Okay, my starting threat is twenty nine, which is eleven from Celeborn, nine from Gladriel, and nine from Thranduil. So nine, nine, and eleven is twenty nine. So now this guy's. I'm going to optionally engage this guy. But it, I don't think it matters one way or the other. Um, not at this point in time, it doesn't. Okay, and then any time you have an enemy that is engaging you, you deal all their shadow cards all at once. But that's not a huge deal in this case. So, but now there's an action window. And I think in this action window... You know what? I'm, I'm not going to do it because I think I may want to try to bring out Haldir next turn. Well, you could still potentially bring out Haldia next turn. Gladwell's got three resources, or is it just two? It's two. Uh, so, yeah. um, uh, here's I'm, what I'm going to do. Here, I'll bring out the Nath Guide for these two, res two resources. Okay. Now, that doesn't seem like a good move, except I'm going to use the Tree People... Mommy, bring the Nath Guide back into my hand. And then search the top five cards for somebody. And I'm hoping to get Legolas here. Oh, and look. One, two, three, four, five. So now Legolas comes out. And that's a really good trade up there. Yep, that is indeed. <laughs> so are you upset that you've spent those two <laughs> resources out? No. <laughs> And so the reason why Legolas is a good trade-up here is because Legolas, first of all, when he comes into play, he gets the plus one um, to all his stats because of Celeborn. But the other reason why it's good is that he allows me to draw cards. So to have those cards in my hand are um, are good, a good thing. Okay. So this guy, because he just engaged me, he gets plus one attack. So he's attacking for three. 
then I will flip the card. Let's see. So he gets defending player must choose and discard one attachment that I control. That is a shadow effect. Ugh. So which which should I get rid of here? Um, I'd say. And um, do you have the another copy of Nenya in your hand? I don't. But I think that Nenya is the one to do it. Yes, you are so useful. Right. But if you're, it's a hard call that one. Yeah. I think that that's the better one to get rid of because yeah. Thranduil allows me to bring people into play and I probably won't have to worry too much about questing. So, anyways, okay. that so I wish I had I wish I had quicker than sight to, to pull. I would have pulled Legolas back into my hand. <laughs> but. Yeah, um, so there was no damage done from that attack because the forest spider only has three attack when it attacks first and Thranduil's defend, native defense is three. So right. there was no damage dealt from that attack. And then I'm going to attack with Legolas, and he does four because of Kellibor's ability. So he That's has a defensive damage. one, so it's three damage on the Forest Spider. Too bad he didn't have um, the full um, deal on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no room in the deck for any attachments. No, no, no. There's Just not. the ones that I have. So I'm going to ready no. everybody, increase my threat. Okay, this guy's still engaged with me. I'll be able to kill him this round. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, look, I get a Galadrim Weaver. Okay, so the Weaver's a good card to have, first of all, because she only costs one. But second of all, now I can take Nenya, right? Put it back into my deck, and get have more luck. Hopefully, pulling Nenya back out of my deck, and then I'm gonna play two to play the Nath Guide. So the Nath Guide allows me to not have. Um, not exhaust a character who's questing. So I'm going to pick Celeborn to not exhaust. Is it, is it a character or is it a hero? Oh, it's a hero. I'm sorry, you're right. So, um, and the Neath Guide doesn't exhaust a quest because of Galadriel's ability, nor does the Weaver. <laughs> so... I'm going to quest for three, five, seven. Yeah, I think that's enough. And then if I need, to, right, then if I need to, I can always boost with, I can always no, boost you can't with, with, what's that? You can't boost with Galadriel. Oh, you're right, because I don't have Nenya on her. Okay. So I turn over one card. Oh, look. And this is exactly what I was saying. Guess what that is. The Necromancer's Reach? It's Necromancer's Reach, which does one damage to each exhausted character. And so nothing's which exhausted. Probably, which is probably one of the most hated cards in the entire game. I know, for a lot of reasons. Because, you know, you get that at the end of the game, and you have everybody exhausted, and it's like everybody's taking one damage and it stinks. Um, I don't know. But it's also most hated because it's so many people people have the core set and have been playing, and that's just the card that ends up really stinking. So you're up against... You've sent seven, you're up against two, that's five. Four that's five, so that's three here. So two I on the main quest. Two more on the main quest. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the... Are you sure you want to go to the Enchanted Stream, or do you just want to leave it there? Yeah, I don't care about drawing cards right now. It's just that Legolas's ability won't go off yeah, but it's not going to go off. Whatever. I'd rather get rid of it than... Okay. So now it's combat. This guy goes here, so I'm going to I'm gonna defend with Thranduil. And now the forest spider is down to its basic two attack. 
and Chieftain Uftak. Oh, that's a shame to see him go. <laughs> and, and now I just need to do two damage. So just to be a, a, a pain in the butt, I'm going to actually do two damage with the Nath Guide. <laughs> the Nath Guide's actually done something useful for a change. Right. <laughs> so this guy goes into the into the discard pile. And before the end of my turn, I'm going to use Galadriel's ability to draw a card. You can't draw a card. What's that? You can't draw a card because of the enchanted stream. While enchanted stream is the act of rotation. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can right. still use our ability to lower your threat. Which. Okay, I'll uh, right. So I'll draw, not draw the card because the enchanted stream. This is why it's so great to have Grant here doing this. And so, so now we're in the third round. So lower my threat, raise my threat. Ready this guy. I can't draw a card, nope. but I get five resources here. One and one. These two have been out now for a while. So now I'm gonna. Bring out another Neath guide. And are you targeting target Caliborn again? Targeting Caliborn again. And I'm going to. I will quest for three, five, six, seven. There's two here, and plus I need to do three to get through this quest. So. I'm likely to do it if unless I get a really bad draw. Necromancer's pests. <laughs> okay. Four progress you make. Four. So that's yeah. two. That goes by. And then I'm at seven on the main quest. Um are you going to travel to the Necromancer's Pass? Are you going to risk that random discard? Well, I only have two cards in my hand. So I have Haldir, and I have Island Amid Perils. But three threat is a lot to have in the staging area. Whatever. I'll do it. Okay, I'll travel here. Now, normally I would turn these over and shuffle them up, and then roll dice to make sure that it's completely random. But since I only have two cards at random, okay, I'm gonna discard. I'm gonna discard them like that. And bearing in mind, you wouldn't be um, for new players. You wouldn't be able to travel there if you had less than two cards in your hand. Right. You have to be able to trigger the the travel effect. Yes. If you can't, you can't travel. So now I'm gonna use. Galadriel's ability to draw a card, lower my threat by one. But now at the end of the turn, you raise your threat by one. Raise my threat by one and draw a card. Oh, so look, I got Olorian, which is a great card. It's one of those resource accelerators. So now we have eight on eight resources on Galadriel, one and one on these guys. Okay, so I'll play Olorien on Caliborn. It doesn't really matter who it goes on. And I can't play the Minstrel because I don't have any lore resources right yet. So I'll put that face up. This is what's in my hand. So now it's just a matter of questing. I'm going to quest for three, six. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just wondering, wouldn't it be better? It seems you've got so many resources on Gladrail, you want to trigger her ability now, just to see if you get something before questing that you could actually put into play. Okay. That, that makes more sense. Okay, so I will trigger her ability, lower my threat by one. So I'm at 29 threat. I got the Elven King. Okay. So Elven King costs one. 
So I'll put that. Okay. So now I'll quest. And I, how about I quest for five instead of six? <laughs> Probably doesn't matter, right? Yeah. What's the? I'll quest for six. <laughs> I'll quest for six. Okay. And then there's the forest gate. That's two threats, so you've sent six, or you've sent five? I sent six. Six, so that's four progress, so that clears out the um, mountains of gold that do on the quest card. Okay, fork in the road. What's that say? Uh, it's just a bit of flavor text, um, which says, As you move through Mirkwood, hounded by spiders, the forest path forks before you. And then, as you flip it over, unsure of what lies ahead, but spurred by the urgency of your message, you choose a path and proceed. But then it's got a nice little forced effect. When you defeat this stage, proceed to one of the proceed to one of the chosen uh, one of the two chosen path stages at random. Right, so I'm going to have to choose a path here in the next time. So, um, I'll just get a random number generator up and sort off for you, mate. Okay, so, okay, so, but I'm going to travel. I'm going to travel to the forest gate. And now it's a combat phase. We still get a combat phase, even though, right? Yes. So I'm going to play the minstrel for, actually, I'm going to play the minstrel for one. Because I'm going to use O Lorian. And that allows me to search top five for any event card. One, two, three, four, five. And so that's the Weaver, Orifin, Tracker, Rumil, and Nenya. And look, Nenya way. was the top, so I don't get any, so I whiff. Do you want to trigger the Alvin King to return somebody to your hand? Um, yes. I'm going to. Okay, so I'm going to trigger the Elven King to return the Weaver to my hand. Because I want to get Haldir back into my deck somehow. Okay, so everything readies. Um, I'll just leave Stuart exhausted since you're just going to add the two resources straight away. It makes it easier for you moving cards around. Hey, hey. Um, did you draw the two cards? Yes, you did draw the two cards. Right. Card Based on your two. suggestion, right? So, yeah. So that's 10 for her, one and one. Okay, so I'm going to play Nenya now on her. And then I'm going to play. Who's, who's, did you? You're using the resources off her for it, yeah? Yeah. So that. I'm down to eight resources on her. So now, because of the Weaver comes into play, I get to take Haldir, the top card of my discard pile, and put it back into my deck. And so then I have to shuffle, shuffle all the cards back. And this is why OCTGN is easier. <laughs> A lot less time taking shuffling. <laughs> Okay, so she just came out. So she doesn't exhaust a quest because of Galadriel, so that's two, five, six, seven, eight. Does eight seem reasonable? And then if I yeah. need to, I can use Galadriel to bump me up. Yeah, that sounds like fine. Yeah. Okay. When revealed. Hey, hey, hey. Eyes of the Forest. Discard all event cards in my hand. What hand? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, uh, this finger goes in my discard pile. Okay, so, so I quested for two, three, four, five, seven, eight. So this goes. So I get to draw two cards because of the forest gate. No, that forced effect would have happened when you traveled there. Uh, I. Don't know if I did it. That's okay. After okay. you travel to Forest. No, you're right. 
Okay, and then we put two on here, so this guy is done, and so now right. we get to pick... And you get number two. Which one's one and two? Uh, one is... One, two. One, yeah. two. So this one? Um, yep. Okay. Okay, so this is just a flavor text on the front, the trail winds, in the sense that foul dark presence is hunting you. Okay, so ten progress. Ah, uh, you got the, you got the easy one. I know. So this is Bayorn's path. This is the easier one of the two. Let's say his players cannot defeat the stage while Uncle Lance Spawn is in play. Look, there's not Uncle Lance Spawn is not in play, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> okay. And the flavor text on that reads: You attempt to follow a secret hidden trail to avoid the enemy. <laughs> Oh, right. Okay, so I'm going to use... I'm gonna use... Now, here's, now, here's where um, Ungolian spit spawn comes in and wrecks them. <laughs> right, so now this is the thing. Okay. So now I use Galadriel's ability. Now I'm going to draw another card for the beginning of my turn, and I draw Legolas, which I can't use. So now I'm going to get resources. So I made a Two, eleven, and two. You want to trigger Galadriel's ability to see if you can get something useful? No, I want to keep it up because I'm going to get through this stage right this time. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so um, I'm going to pay for this guy, even though it's kind of a weird time to pay for him. And I'll pay one just to get the extra questing. So I use oh, Plus, you could always bring them back with Elven King and then play them with right. the combat phase anyway. Right. So he doesn't exhaust, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, nine. Ten. And this is where Ungolian Spawn comes out and wrecks your entire board. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Watch it be Hummer Horns. Great forest web. Yeah, you would. <laughs> okay. It's a two so, threat location. Two threat. And I can exhaust her. Take it to 14. to 14. Put 10 there. Win. Yep. Okay, so what's your final threat there, mate? Um, my final threat is 29. And your turn counter? I think I'm at six. So that is a total of 89 score. Because there's no damage on heroes, there's nothing in the victory display. Yep. I'll chop that up to be a fairly decent win. Yeah, it's a pretty good win. How does how does scoring work for those people who don't know? Basically, your total threat at the end of the game, um, plus your round sequence times 10, minus one plus one for all the damage so if you've got three damage you get plus three damage on, on heroes point. right yeah damage on heroes um then minus any victory points that you may have accumulated all the game right and then that gives you your total score now the scoring is completely arbitrary so don't worry about that now what's better higher points or lower points uh the lower the score the better Right. Think of it is the higher points equaling um, the threat that Sauron has come for you. The higher your threat, the closer Sauron is to you. The lower your end score, the less likely he has been to spot you. Okay. Well, there it is. Passage through Mirkwood. One win toward the one deck run. Yeah, it only took for two attempts, but hey <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. And if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of Card Talk, feel free to search YouTube where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username Card Talk 2018. Or you can search the RSS feed, Card Talk 2018.libsyn.org, for our extended audio versions of our podcast. Or you can find us on Facebook at Card Talk 2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at Card Talk 2018 at gmail.com.